Machinations Through Time is a standalone scenario for Arkham Horror the Card Game. You can play it as a side quest in between parts of a campaign. It has an epic multiplayer mode where exactly three groups of up to four players can play together. And that is pretty much all you need to know. Like, share, subscribe, ring the dingaling, and so on. If you want some more information but want to remain totally spoiler free, remember we did a top 10 questions video. If you fancy something a bit more comprehensive but still hopefully with minimal spoilers, buckle up investigators. Roughly once per year, Fantasy Flight Games creates a new standalone scenario. A standalone pack is a self-contained adventure where all the cards you need are included within the product, so you won't need any of the encounter sets from the core box or any expansions. And it contains no new player cards. Oh lordy! Before the enlightened days of one box full of player cards and one box with a whole campaign, FFG would mix up all the player cards and scenario cards and spread them across seven different products, which you had to track down and purchase separately like some demented minigame before you actually got to start playing. Look, let's just accept the fact that humans weren't always the enlightened, civilized creatures you think of them today, and there was a time before indoor plumbing or the wheel. Can we save the questions till the end, please? Once per year, Fantasy Flight Games creates a new standalone scenario. All familiar with that term? Good. This is to play at the Gen Con gaming convention in the US and then at Arkham Knights events internationally. It is then released for general sale the following year. Sometimes there will be two different versions with different packaging if they have to create a print on demand set to use at conventions because the final version wouldn't arrive back from the printer in time. This is true for machinations through time, which is why you might have seen these weird oversized versions on eBay. For the first time, however, the Game Center, which was formerly the FFG Gaming Center, entered into a partnership to bulk print these packs and sell them in their retail and online stores, so there are many more of these copies still about. Then in February 2020, the regular sized retail version came on sale. There are four key differences between these iterations. Most obviously is this oversized packaging, which is a bugger to store, but is recyclable category one plastic, the same stuff your disposable water bottles are made from. Secondly, the retail version has the rules in a folded stapled booklet, and the event version has them on loose cards, the same size as the booklet pages. As a game organizer, the cards are definitely much better as you can leave the unneeded ones like the post-game resolution and optional variants in the box away from the players. Plus, once you are done with a pre-game step like the chaos bag composition, setup instruction, or four pages of waffling story text, you can get it off the table and back in the packaging. Next, the first edition has the Arkham Knights 2021 logo, both on the back of the pack, which is fine, and printed on the cards, which was quite a surprise. Finally, the convention edition of this item was produced domestically using lower cost printing machines, so you may notice a difference in the resolution or vibrancy of the colours. However, because this is self-contained, you won't be mixing encounter sets together, and if you play it standalone, you won't be taking any story assets with you, so this shouldn't be a problem. The most important thing to note about print-on-demand cards is the cheaper materials and lack of any top-layer lamination means they don't handle water well at all. This kind of unchecked spill or even high levels of dampness and humidity can cause the cards to stick together or to adhere to the packaging, which will result in damage when you try and remove them. Trust us, we are definitely experts when it comes to water damage. As there is plenty of room in your oversized pack, do drop some silica gel in there. Opening up the retail version, you can see the rulebook fits nicely on top. Underneath this are two packs of shrink-wrapped cards, spoiler side out. There are 39 cards each, making a total pack size of 78 cards. This one contains the act, agenda, scenario reference, locations and story assets, and the other one contains all the encounter cards. Plus a lone story card, so don't forget to remove that. It was almost the perfect setup. If you want some previews of the cards and story, then FFG has their usual spoiler-filled preview article on their website. If not, it is basically a time travel romp concerning the past, present, and future. That's not a spoiler! The clue's in the title! 
It is worth noting that the blurb describes this as being designed for a fun and interactive experience. Not quite the tomfoolery of Barkham horror, but maybe a bit less gritty and nihilistic than the usual horror you are used to. Such is the beauty of the standalone scenario. You can be a little broader in your tone and setting. Page 1 has the expansion symbol, which is very thematic. Page 2 lets you know you can play in standalone or side story mode, and has the standalone chaos bag set up for all four difficulty levels. Back in the day, standalone packs would only come with two difficulty levels, which sucks because everyone should play on easy. Page 3 lets you know this will cost your investigators two experience if you want to insert this between two of your campaign scenarios. Then it moves on to scenario specific rules for the next few pages and we'll skip over those. There are two non-core rulebook keywords that appear in this scenario and you'll be pleased to see they have remembered to actually include the rules on how they work. Then you get to the unique part of an Arkham Knight scenario, Epic Multiplayer Mode. In addition to the regular method of 1 to 4 investigators that you are used to, you can also have 3 separate groups of 1 to 4 investigators playing the scenario, provided you have 3 separate copies of this product. And you must have 3 groups because there are past, present and future segments to this game. This scenario shines when you do play in Epic Multiplayer, so try and get as close to 12 investigators, or preferably 12 players as you can, as this is a very interactive scenario with the groups required to work together to influence each other's gameplay. Yes, you can play it as a single group, but imagine playing all three scenarios of the gathering at the same time and hopping between them. A single group or solo player won't get the maximum out of this scenario, so maybe play Hotel California instead. This game uses story cards dealt out randomly to add some narrative and gameplay variants to keep things fresh if you play it multiple times. There is also the traditional list of optional variants at the end of the rules if you find yourself getting bored, or if Expert just isn't hard enough for your janky broken infinite combo deck. After the credits you have a list of announcements. These are milestones or checkpoints that advance the story for all groups. Think of them as things you would write down in your campaign log. You will want to photocopy these and check them off. Don't cross them out as you will need to remember what they say. With the event packaging you can easily store the cards no matter how chonky your sleeves are along with some tokens. Sadly even using something like KMC Perfect Fit these won't fit comfortably in the retail box. If you have the event edition we definitely recommend sleeving your rule cards given how susceptible to water damage like sweat from your fingers these are. Brace yourself, but this is what happens when you don't sleeve them. If you are an event organiser and you will be buying copies to run repeatedly at events, then this should be a no-brainer, particularly in Covid times. Just rooting around in our sleeve collection, we found that the tiny epic kingdoms from Mayday games were great if you wanted a really snug fit. But as we like more flap at the top of the cards, we prefer to use the Swan Pan Asia Cutthroat Cavern size. Both of these are pretty thin, so if you want a more premium thickness, Sleeve Kings do a tiny epic kingdom size, and Paladin Sleeves have their Pelinor size, which has the same snug fit widthwise as the Mayday and Sleeve Kings, but is taller as well as being thicker. Having sleeves will also allow you to mark off the announcements card with a dry erase marker, and then reset it so you don't have to worry about making copies. Before we go, we just want to mention how neat the artwork is, and how many references to Arkham's deep lore there are woven into this scenario. Not only do you get to see Arkham in the past, exploring some of its origins, you get to see some speculation on what the future holds. Although, the universe will probably have been devoured long before then. Thanks for watching everyone, if you want to support the channel for free, then please do share this video on social media so others can find it.